of wire. I don't know whether you, you know of this True Peace magazine. It's uh, available every month, published in Korea, in English. It's about 60 pages of incredible news, true parents, speeches, and activities from our missionaries all over the world. I re recommend you, you get this. It's free, online, and it's available for anybody. <coughs> you to, on this audio on notice sheet, it's got, it tells you how to get it on iPeace TV. And um, you just go there, log in, and then you can read this every month. It's really worthwhile. So the reading this morning is taken from True Peace magazine. It's one of Father's speeches he gave in 2003. And it's just a very short, short reading. So the ultimate purpose of human life is to graduate from the religious life, a life of restoration, and live as men and women of the original world of creation. Religion came about only because of the fall. Hence, does it make sense to say that the sole purpose of life is to live buried in religion? If there had been no fall, how would men and women originally have lived? Human beings were originally God's children. Thus, we are destined to live with true love, realize a true family, and establish a free, peaceful, united, and happy world. We are supposed to live in the kingdom of heaven on earth. So this morning, Mary's going to talk to you about this topic, about the, uh, how to get out of the heavenly repair shop. So please uh, enjoy. Pray first. Our heavenly parents and our true parents, I really come to you now and to first of all really truly apologize for not really attending you properly, for not understanding your heart the way you have tried to reach out to us every single day. You are trying to make our lives such a beautiful experience and we just walk through it with big boots and don't see your heart, how it's bleeding out for us and how you try to catch us and embrace us. Father, I pray that we can really change that in our life, that we can open up our eyes and our heart and try to see what it is you are trying to tell us, that we can move on and really build your kingdom on earth. We ask you to be with us now and to share this moment together. I ask this on behalf of everyone and my name, David and Mary Franklin, of a blessed family, are you? <coughs> so my, my talk today is from this speech uh, True Father gave in 2003. And uh, I really cried when I read it because I could really see I have not at all understood what he tried to say. He, I have read it before, I'm sure, many times, but I didn't actually see what it is he's trying to say. So I really had to repent a lot before I started to make the service today. But I really began to understand. And that's why I called it, let us get out of the repair shop. I know you who, who didn't realize what I was talking about properly looked at the, the, or listened to the words, let's get out of the repair shop. 
I'm sure you were thinking, oh dear, Auntie Mary have lost it now. <laughs> She's talking about something ridiculous. Yeah, mm, I was thinking of, of that very deeply when this is actually true father's word. Let us get out of that repair shop. That is actually not my word. Very interesting, isn't it? Anyhow, uh, basically what it is, like say, for example, the truth is that David and me, our car is broken down. So it's in the repair shop <laughs> being sorted out. Luckily, it's not that much down that it can't be repaired. It do get repaired. So, but he's going to pick it up tomorrow. But say he goes there tomorrow to pick up the car, it's repaired. And then the car say, no, 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 I don't want to go back with you. I want to stay here in the repair shop. Because uh, the garage guy, Janus, is a very nice Italian guy. And his team, they're very good to me, so I'm staying here. I'm not giving with you. That kind of destroys the whole idea of having a car. If you put it in a repair shop and he doesn't want to come home, home with you when he's repaired, I kind of miss the whole point of having a car. And the worst part is that uh, if Tom O'Connell's truck, I don't know if he have one, but if his truck is uh, also broken down and go into the same repair shop and also decide he doesn't want to go back to Tom again. You have two there now, but then Tom's truck, he, he doesn't like David's car too much, so he decides he wants to have another repair shop somewhere else. And now we have two repair shops and the car, all the cars are staying there not coming back home to the owners. That creates a real chaos and creates actually uh, very difficulties for the whole purpose why they are created. And that is our main problem. We are all in God's heavenly repair shop, but we can't get out of there, because it's very nice. It's very lovely. I remember last time I went to Changpyeong. It's our holy place. Changpyeong is our holy place, and it's like a retreat where you can really spiritually, you know, restore yourself and become in a better shape. And some people said to me, oh, isn't it lovely here? I want to stay. And I thought, no, why should we stay here in Changpyong? I mean, for the first, we sleep on the floor. We don't have a bed. And I sleep together with 100 other people. I mean, give me a break, huh? Do I really want to? I mean, it's very nice there. And it's true, it's very uplifting. And spiritually, wow, you feel really great. But the point is not to stay there. The point is that we have to go home and then live and then inspire other people. So I started to, to, uh, to really uh, begin to understand this message True Father was trying to give us. And it's a, it's a message that, you know, could reach out to us and help us to unite together if we really understand it. So please try and read it when you come home. 
So the whole point is that the purpose of religion is, is actually like the repair shop is religion. So the purpose of religion is to find a true person and on that build the true family, the true nation and the true world centered upon Heavenly Father. That's what our Heavenly Father have been trying to do. So that actually also means that people from other religions, they are not, uh, it doesn't mean that they are not right. The other religions are doing exactly the same. They are trying to find a true person, the true couple, the true society, the true nation, and to bring peace on earth. But just like us, just like Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and so on, we stay in the repair shop. We get centered upon our religion and forget that the goal is not the religion. The goal is for us to be able to unify with Heavenly Father. And when God is your center every day, when you wake up in the morning, you say, good morning, heavenly parents, because God is both male and female in one. You say, good morning, heavenly parents. And if, he, if they say, you know, back to you, oh, good morning, my child. Would you need any religion? No. They will tell you straight, you know. I want to talk to you about yesterday. I wasn't happy about you yesterday. Yeah? They will, they will tell straight to you how you are behaving, what you need to do, what you don't need to do. Huh? In that moment, you don't need these guidelines. But don't misunderstand me. It doesn't mean that when you have a child, you can just leave your child alone because they don't need any guidance. Oh, no, you do need to give them guidance. You do need to help your children to read Heavenly Father and connect with God before you let them sprout by themselves. So they, like David's little brother asked, no, actually one of his nephew asked, can we ask you, is your children born perfect? I start laughing. I wish. <laughs> it would have made our life a lot more easy if it was like that. Sadly, God, God doesn't make that kind of thing. You know? We have to work for it to make them. But the point is that if you don't know how to become a perfect person, completely united, with God's heart and love. How can you show your children? You can't. You can't. So you have to go there first. And you have to be in a repair shop. And you have to really make sure that you read, that you repair, that you get the right. The reason why we couldn't get the car, he didn't have the right, what do you call it? Parts. Yeah. So you need the right parts also that you don't get fixed with the wrong parts, huh? But as soon you are fixed with the right part and you can start functioning, and when you really feel God's heart is in you, and to be able, you, you will probably ask me, yeah, but how do I know I have God's heart in me? I mean, yeah, it's a question, isn't it? You know, do I, if I go out of here, can I really say I have God's heart with me? 
No, I think God's heart is completely different from ours in the way that, for example, we don't go much witnessing. I know I'm coming back to that. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, Auntie Mary, don't talk about that. Yeah, but you see, if you have really God's heart, and if you are a parent, you are a parent, can you say that if I just have one of my children with me, it's fine. I don't need the others. Huh? I have six children. No, I don't. I have three. <laughs> I have actually, actually some more children in Africa which we are sponsoring. Anyhow, I have three children. Would I be happy if I just had Michael with me? No. We wouldn't be happy before I had both Caroline and Tim with me. I need to see them happy too. I need to see them, you know, blessed, married, with children, and, and living with God every day. So I Skype them every day. Well, not every day. They would get really fed up. But once a week, I Skype them. And I can see sometimes they are not so excited about, oh, here comes the mummy again. This is going to ask these questions, you know. Did you study today? Did you pray today? Did you pray together, you know? <laughs> and then nearly never dare to say, oh, I'm so fed up about this and I can't do that because you know, if I say that, mommy will start a lecture. <laughs> Here she goes. Don't ask her any questions. She starts the lecture again. <laughs> Anyhow, they do love you. Don't worry, your children still love you, even you give them small lectures all the time. But basically, you will never be happy before you get all of them, would you? No, but that's the same with Heavenly Father. And you and I, are not his only children. He has all the children out there. As soon as you walk out the door, the first person you meet, that is God's heavenly child. Do you think like that? No, you think, oh, you know, let me get home. I want some lunch. I want something to eat and get my feet up and relax because tomorrow I have to start work. You know, just give me some rest. <laughs> yeah, I think the same. Don't worry. You are not the only one. Yeah? So, but actually, when I step out the door and see this person coming, walking with the, with the rucksack, I should go up to him and say, oh, hi, you know, Heavenly Father is so happy to see you today. Are you feeling good? He'll probably look at you and think, oh, here is a bad woman, you know. But anyhow, if you keep smiling, he might stop and listen to what you say, yeah. So we need to make friends with all our brothers and sisters out there, some of them are a bit lost. And do remember that those who are brought up in a different religion than you, it doesn't mean they don't understand God's heart. Really, remember that. They might even be closer to God than you are. But if you are pride, you know, cannot be overcome. You need to work on that. You need to go back in the repair shop and sort that out, you know, so that you don't disrespect other people, other religious, other cultures, but that you can really embrace them and really love them. And you have to love them for their sake, not for you to to shine, like, look, Heavenly Father, I'm following you. 
I'm talking to your children. Don't do that. That is so, you know, not so nice to look at. And the place you can start to, to witness is to each other, huh? as couples. Really love each other, huh? cuddle each other, be good to each other, make cups and teas and give each other massage. My husband always massages me. He's such a good man, such a lovely man. But I do, I do, I wash his feet. Every month I wash his feet, do his nails and everything. I've told some other wife they should do that, and they say, absolutely not. They're not going to touch their husband's feet. <laughs> Why not? He's a beautiful man. He's yours through and through. And he loves it. You should take care of each other like this. Really care for each other. Try and look at each other and try ask your spouse, you know, how do you feel? What do you want? What can I do for you? And the children can do the same. Some of your adult children here. Look at your parents. They are getting older. Huh? Go and cuddle them. Huh? Try and see what you can do to make them happy. I know it's difficult, and I know some of our, us parents are a pain in the backside, but uh, still, we are in the same repair shop, and we are trying to reach out and, and catch Heavenly Fathers. And those of you second gen who is uh, preparing for the matching, do use your time caring for your parents and your siblings and your friends. Don't use your time looking around trying to see if you can find yourself a match. Just look around, serve, love them, love everybody around you. An automatic Heavenly Father gets so excited. He wants to find somebody for you to cuddle. Yeah, he knows you are longing. He knows your heart, you know? And he is trying to find somebody. But it's only when we are capable of doing what Heavenly Father is doing is always to give first. I know there's many people said, yeah, but you know, Mary, you need to also love yourself. I know. But you know, to be honest, if you are in a position, the parents, what is the first thing you experience as a parent? The first thing you experience as a parent, you no longer have your own life. These children take everything out of you, you know? They get sick. You cannot just close the door to the bedroom and say, stay in bed and, stay in bed and keep away from me. You have to sit up, looking at them, taking care of them, finding a solution you know, comfort them. So many times I sat at my children's bed, you know, comforting them, and so they don't realize that. Today they don't ever even talk once about the hours I spent holding their hands, praying over them, cuddling them, taking care of them, making soup for them, and whatever. Yeah, children don't always understand that. Special mothers, I'm so sorry for the mothers, because as soon as you become a mother, you can't do anything anymore. 
The one thing is sure, when you become a mother, you can no longer be sick. Daddy can be sick. The children will take care of daddy. They'll cover him up with blankets and things like this. But if mommy is sick, okay, they come over and lift up the blanket and say, where's the dinner, mommy? <laughs> yeah, so she's allowed to be sick, but only in between the breaks and the dinners and the whatever they need. You can be sick, that's fine, but not during the time I'm having dinner. <laughs> yeah, that is truly sacrifice. And the mother knows that there is no way around that. And that's the kind of parental heart you have to have for people outside. If you have that kind of uh, heart for other people, then you begin to feel God's heart. This is how he feels every day. He cannot feel really happy in his heart because his children are suffering. And it's absolutely horrendous. If you start, I, I try to do on the internet to find how the situation are with crimes and things in this country, just with children, for example. How many children get killed every year in this country by their own, own relatives? And the, the suffering they go through. And we need to stop that. We need to stop that. We need to get people into the repair shop. Huh? Get them into the repair shop, start helping them to repair, and slowly, bit by bit, make each street house by house, make them the school of love, where Heavenly Father's love can spread out and reach into the heart of everyone. Then your children will be safe, and your, your grandchildren. When I look at my little grandchildren, I'm petrified. I'm totally petrified. Oh, my little Amelia is only three and a half year old, and so beautiful she is, and so innocent and so lovely. And I know the kind of world she's going to grow up in. I'm horrified. Because I can't, I just want to take him home. I asked my daughter if I could take her on the, on the plane back and keep her. But my daughter said, no, you can't. You can have her now and then, but that's it. But I just want to keep her and hold her. Or, I remember the neighbors we had before where we lived were from Hindu family and was really desperate. And they kept on coming to us and say in the holidays, where is your children going? Your teenage children is always going. Every time there's a holiday, I see them coming out with their rucksack and their, their sleeping bags and so, where are they going? And I said, oh, they, they go on specific holidays where there is, uh, you know, no drinking, no smoking, and having great fun. But on the same time, it's an area where nobody can hurt them. And they were asking us if, if their girls could do the same. I said, well, what are you doing with your girls? We are locking them in the loft. They are locking their teenage girls in the loft every Easter, every school holiday. You know, that is desperation. <laughs> but that is not a solution. That will end up that the girls will really run when they are old enough. And they will really get into trouble. Because then they are going for all the stuff they think they are losing. Yeah, we, we need to help 
other cultures and other people the same way. They are desperate for our help. So get into the workshop or into the repair shop, get the courage and go out there. Actually, when you go two by two, it's very great. I can't walk, so I use a scooter. A little scooter. <laughs> hey, my husband walking and I'm in a little scooter. We go knocking from door to door. I know we look hilarious. You know? <laughs> of course, in the beginning, people think you are a Jehovah's Witness because you come two by two. Huh? <laughs> Anyhow, it doesn't matter. But they are listening. You know? They're listening. So, Let's do it, huh? Let's make a, you know, let's unite together and bring the blessing everywhere. Because the more we bring the blessing out there, the more the blessing comes to you. It's absolutely like that. David and me have experience the last weeks here, it's incredible. As soon we start making some condition, prayer, study condition, anything, it's amazing what comes in. Also, giving our ties, you know, make sure they get in. I know it's hard to think and everybody have a financial tough time, but it's amazing, we, we, we experience it again and again, as long as we keep it steady and going, money comes in the door from nowhere, actually from the banks of all things. Anyhow, it's lovely. It happened to us. We got actually a beautiful donation from all of you. When David left his uh, general affair, we got a beautiful donation from all of you. And I can tell you what we did is that we, we just put all the money together in one and big envelope and we gave it to a family we felt needed more than we did. So we gave it all to them. And the next day, David got a telephone from the bank, say they had 1,600 pounds for him. <laughs> David first thought this is a good joke. He thought they were up to something. I'm sorry, we don't trust the bank so much today. <laughs> but giving first, and they came. And the day after again, I came to work, and uh, I'm the head of finance, and uh, I had already been giving what you call clear what uh, Christmas gift should be giving to each staff, and they had decided absolutely no bonus. But the second day when I came in, certainly my manager said, uh, oh, we decided on the bonus anyhow. And I said, why is that? I don't know. Just to, the boss, he called up and he said, give them all bonus. <laughs> He's Jewish anyhow, and he thoroughly believed that I have more power and direct connection to God than he have. So he would always ask me, and he had asked me already some days ago, uh, what I thought. I said, you, well, you can give them a gift, but you need to give them bonus. And you have the money, so don't start. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving the man 40,000 a month. That's very good, isn't it? Anyhow, he said, never mind, Mary, we decided not. Anyhow, second day, I came in. God had told him, do it. And he did it. And I got another 1,500. Wow. Huh? And actually, the money we gave away was 260. 
So it was quite a different amount of money we got back, isn't it? 3,010. So do you have the faith? Wow. Well, it's having the faith to do it because there's no guarantee. Because if we have not earned it by the way we are living, by the way we challenge ourselves and the courage we have, we can't do it. My husband is desperate looking at the clock. I better stop. Huh? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, let's have courage. Let's go out there and let's share with everyone. Huh? Thank you so much. I love you. <laughs>